we had good worship over with our brothers and sisters at Bethlehem, and they sent you their greetings. And it looks like it will be working out well. Good morning to anyone who's joining us via Zoom. So I invite you to open up your bulletins, however you do that, whether digitally or paper-wise. And to turn to our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, feed us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have received with God, peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And also with you. Let us recite together the Kyrie. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word. It saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. Pour out your grace and make us whole, that new life may begin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Make sin and shame depart. Renew us with your saving power. Create in us new hearts. And together let us recite the Gloria. Come, let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand thousand are their tongues, but all their joys are one. Worthy the Lamb that died, they cry, to be exalted thus. Worthy the Lamb, our lips reply, for he was slain for us. Jesus is worthy to receive honor and power divine, and blessings more than we can give, be Lord forever thine. Let all creation join in one to bless the sacred name of God who sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. O oh Lord, you know... Remember me and visit me. Bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. 
your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Here ends the reading. Let us recite together Psalm 26, response. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I am not sad with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory lies. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter. Paul writes, Let love be genuine. Take what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Do not but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends the reading. I invite you to join me in uh, reciting our gospel acclamation. Alleluia. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know the hope to which God has called us. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. 
And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Mark Sandlin tells this story about the day he graduated from college. It was graduation day and I was receiving my first college diploma. I was quite pleased with myself and it was sort of a big deal in my family. They were all coming to see me receive my diploma. Even my grandmother, who was my last surviving grandparent at that point, made the long trip from the coast to the mountains of North Carolina for the big event. Oddly enough, in the end, they did not get to see what they had come for. You see, graduation was on a Sunday, and I was borrowing a cap and gown from a friend and was supposed to pick it up at the Wesley Foundation, which is a Christian group on campus that I was a part of. Most of my college friends came from there. Even the campus minister and his wife were close friends of mine. So Sunday morning, I headed off to the Wesley Foundation to retrieve the cap and gown in hopeful expectation of bumping into the campus minister as he prepared for Sunday school class that he taught there. On such a joyous day, he would be nothing more than a toothy smile. It would be good to see him. I was surprised to find the doors locked. They were usually open early Sunday morning for those coming to Sunday school. I will never forget what happened next. I cut my hands around my face to block the glare from the morning sun, and I leaned into the doors to see if I could spot anyone inside. At this point, I should say that it was not unusual or something very unusual to be going on at the foundation on a Sunday morning. As the Sunday school teacher, our campus minister loved to surprise us with lessons that would then carry into the classroom. So at first it was not too surprising to see what looked like him reclining on the stairs in the back part of the building. The morning glare was exceptionally harsh that day, so I couldn't see enough to be quite sure what was going on. So after a very brief second, I rapped on the glass. Nothing, no movement, no sound, nothing. I hurried around to the back door and peering in the tall window beside it, I looked down the stairwell. No doubt about it. That was my minister and something was wrong. I ran to the church next door found the associate minister in the kitchen and told him that something was very wrong with the campus minister next door at the Wesley Foundation. And without giving him a second chance, I grabbed an exceptionally large and heavy cooking pot on my way back to the foundation. I stood at the front door alone. No words, no thought, 
just the glare of the sun off the glass and the cooking pot. With one huge heave, I flung the pot at the glass and it shattered with no resistance at all. The next thing I knew, I was standing next to him. I checked for a pulse, checked for breathing, nothing. I remember nothing else until I was in the foundation's upstairs apartment with the police. I'm sure that they were asking me questions about what happened, but all I remember is being told that I would not make my graduation ceremony. Truthfully, at that point, it didn't really matter, but that's all I remember about being with the police. The next thing I remember is them leaving. I was left alone, finally. My emotions were running rampant, pain, grief, fear, disappointment, loss, anger. The world was spinning too fast and I needed some peace. Sitting there in a burnt orange easy chair that was now under stuff from years of use, I decided to pray. God, that was it, God, no matter how many times I tried, that was all that would come out, I had no words, I was lost, I began to cry, the only sounds in the room were the muffled sighs, cries, and groans of my grief, words were too trite, too limited to tell the tale of struggle and strife that was beating my insides apart. <clears throat> Beyond feeling physically sick, I also felt spiritually sick. I had tried to pray, but I could not. I didn't know whether to blame God or to run to God. This experience of the guttural groan when words cannot truly convey the depth of our pain and sorrow, is a truly an example of a biblical lament. And it is a lament that we are faced with in our Old Testament reading for today from the prophet Jeremiah. For we know that Jeremiah was a prophet and that God had called Jeremiah to warn the people of Judah to turn from their misguided and evil ways. The people of Judah at the time of Jeremiah had turned their backs on God and were leading lives that were the furthest thing from what God wanted. God sent Jeremiah to, in as one last resort to bring the people back to God before the horror of the Babylonian captivity and the destruction of the temple by Nebuchadnezzar. And as hard as Jeremiah worked, it seemed to make no difference. For the people beat up Jeremiah. They attempted to silence him. And even at one point threw him in a pit of mud, hoping, possibly praying, that he would die. The temple priests told people to ignore this prophet of God. And so Jeremiah cries out in lament to God. He cries out asking, why God called Jeremiah to this horrendous life, this life of misery and toil. He states that he has led a toilless life so that God's message might be proclaimed. And yet nothing had come of his hard work. Essentially, Jeremiah groans that guttural groan of lament. But the key here to distinguishing a lament from simply a complaint session, is that a lament ends with a statement of trust. In this case, a statement of trust in God. Jeremiah says that despite all he has gone through and what he will go through, that he trusts God's word. And he trusts that God's word will stand strong and that God's promises will be fulfilled. And God responds to Jeremiah in the second half of our first reading with the reassurance that Jeremiah prays. Specifically,
loudly that while people will try and kill Jeremiah and will fight against him, they will not prevail. God's word will prevail above all else. And even in Mark Sandlin's case, where he lets out that cry of God, that simple one word lament, it has so much wrapped up in it. There is the cry of what and why did you let this happen? But also the cry of faith that says, God, I know you're out there. I need you here with me. And the current state of our world, with COVID seemingly everywhere, preventing life as we know it from occurring, where families have a hard time gathering, and once in a lifetime events from uh, being the occasions that they were planned to be, in a world where who knows what's gonna happen next, and when we might be able to gain some semblance of normalcy in our lives. But not just that, with the tensions and the violence surrounding race and privilege, where one skin color determines the type of treatment they receive, where sections of cities are going up in flames and other parts are being looted with riots occurring in the streets, where the question of where to draw the line crosses our minds on a regular basis, and where we as a people are seemingly more divided than united. This is the time. This is the time for us as Christians, as a nation, as humankind to cry out in lament. We need to cry out in lament. We must release the pain and the anguish. We must give up to God our grief over the life we probably will never live again. And our pain in watching brothers fight brothers and sisters fight sisters. We must call out to God our agony over the injustices of this world. For God hears our cries. He hears our pain. And he says, I hear you, child. He hears us and he understands us. Because Christ, too, called out laments from that horrid tree on which he hung. He cried out, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? He knows that deep, guttural groan. But then, what do we do? What do we do when we have called out and given to over to God all the pain and sorrow? We have faith. In fact, we must have faith. We must have faith, and that means that we must trust the promises of God. For that is what takes us from the pain and the sorrow and brings us to the place in which we know that God is in charge and that God's rule will ultimately triumph over all. For God promised us that in the last days, his kingdom would come to be here on earth. And he promised that there would be no more crying, no more weeping, that pain would be no more, that death would be no more. And he promised that we would be with him because of Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension to the end of the age and beyond. So know that you are never alone. And that when life gets to be too much, that we can, and maybe we should, cry out in lament. For God will respond back to us with words of comfort and healing. For God keeps his promises. And so we say, thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to turn to the Apostles' Creed as together we confess our faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we gather separately and together in spirit, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the words, in your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Caring for the church around the world, we pray for a spirit of ecumenical cooperation, for the health of the congregations during this difficult time, for our bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders. Hear us, God our Savior. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Seeing before us your good creation, we pray for the repair of what we have harmed, for polar ice, for lands dealing with oppressive heat, for fields ravaged by storms and fires. Hear us, God, our creator. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Facing so many international problems, we pray for the strengthening of democracies, for peaceful resolutions to conflicts, for the people of Belarus, Lebanon, and Yemen, for researchers seeking a vaccine, for racial justice within our nation, for our legislators to assist the lives of the poor, for an ethical election campaign. Hear us, God, our mighty fortress. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Surrounded by people with great and hidden need, we pray. For families frightened by the uncertain future, for those whose homes have burned down, for students deprived of an effective education, for refugees and prisoners. Hear us, God, our hope. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Aware of all who are sick and suffering, we pray. For all who are facing the coronavirus, for those without medical care, for those we remember here before you. Hear us, God, our healer. In your steadfast love, we pray. Confident for your love for us, we pray also for ourselves and the members of our sister congregation, Bethlehem Lutheran in Chesterton. Hear us, God, our friend. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Mindful of all who have gone before us in faith, we offer thanks. For all the saints famous and forgotten. For medical workers who have died of the virus. For friends and family we have loved for the promise of everlasting life with you. Hear us, God, our homeland. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from the love of God, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to make your offerings unto the Lord, whether they be time, talent, or treasures. You may place them in the basket, making sure not to create a line. For those who have already given or have given digitally, we thank you so much. For those who are going to give, we thank you. And we thank you because it is you who makes the mission of God possible here on earth.
us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours. As your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to remove your communion cups from their paper bags and to hold on to them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and life. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my salvation, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Together we recite the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You suffer death our lives to save. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You set us free from guilt and grave. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. Eternal peace with God you made. Give us your peace, we pray. At this time, I invite you to open the wafer to remove your mask for communion. And together we will commune and take the bread together. body of Christ given for you. You haven't already now open up your foil on the uh, cup and hold on to it as together we will take the blood of Christ together. The blood of Christ shed for you. Put your remnants in your paper bag and please take them home to uh, dispose of them in your own home. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel Gabriel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick and homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament. And give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now not, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus and Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. I have a few announcements for you today. The first is that several people in the congregation have gotten text messages supposedly from me stating that I've changed my telephone number and that I'm in a cancer ward and I need iTunes or gift card. I'm not sick. I do not have cancer. I've gotten the all clear from seven years ago. I have not changed my number. I, nor any member of the staff, nor member of uh, the leadership or any congregational member will contact you via text message asking for gift cards. This is a common technique now by scammers. So please, if you get one, let us know so that we can be aware if it's still occurring, but just ignore it otherwise. Also, if you know somebody who needs a pastoral care visit, because I don't want to carry anything into anyone's home uh, on my body or my person, I'm doing in-home visits only by request. So have them call the church and we will uh, set up a time to visit. I don't want to uh, make anybody sicker than they already are. Also, uh, I dropped off the school supply that we had collected so far for Joy School. You would have thought I had dropped off a bag of gold. So 
So while you're out, I know that some stores like Walmart and Meijer are starting to put school supplies on clearance. If you want to pick some extras up, they are thrilled to receive them down in Joy School. They have the safe harbor classrooms there for kids. Uh, parents have no place else to send them during the day. And so those supplies will be well used. And also thank you to anyone who has already donated supplies. And then finally, as many of you know, uh, Sandy Whiting is not doing well. She is on hospice. And Joy has moved into her parents' home in order to care for her mother. Uh, we want to be able to allow Joy and Howard to spend most of their time with Sandy. And so we are doing a meal train here. Uh, Carol Hemchek is the person heading it up. But if you would be willing to drop off a casserole to uh, the Whiting so that they don't have to cook, they can just warm it up and have dinner and spend time where they need to be, please let Carol know. We have next Wednesday covered. Uh, we're trying to go for at least every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but even better if we could do every other day. Because knowing Lutherans, we always make more than enough food, so there's always less food. When you call Carol, let her know what kind of casserole you might be thinking of making or a main dish, because the last thing we want is for them to have 15 lavanya. If you have any questions, please speak to me or Carol. And thank you so much for your willingness to be with a sister in Christ during this time. Uh, Joy tells me that Sandy enjoys any and all phone calls. If you want to send a quick text message, send it to Joy's phone because Sandy's having a hard time holding up her own phone at the moment. Um, if you need Joy's number, let me know. I'm happy. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation this morning? Seeing none, go in peace, serve the Lord. Sure,